are going to be starting soon. I just want to remind you to please turn your phones on silent so they don't interrupt the service, and that lunch and refreshments will be served downstairs after the service in the basement. We'll be beginning shortly, and when I do enter, I'll be asking you to rise for the family. Thank you for your patience and respect. Please stand for the arrival of the family. You may be seated.
On behalf of Magdalena and her family, thank you so much for coming to share in this time of grief and remembrance. We're going to enter in today beginning with a time of prayer. Let us pray, responding to my saying, Lord, in your mercy, by saying, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you knit together your chosen people in one communion and fellowship. As the mysterious body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant, we pray, to your whole church light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that all who have given themselves by faith to Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with Jesus to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for us who are still on our earthly pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all of our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for your chosen people to receive pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you in faithful obedience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to all who mourn today a sure confidence in your fatherly care, that casting their grief on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things that we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us to entrust Magdalena to your never-failing love. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and remember her according to the delight which you hold towards all of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that with increasing knowledge and love of you, Magdalena may go from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, grant us with all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, the fullness of life in your eternal and everlasting glory and with all your saints to receive the crown of life promised to all who share in the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now begin to work out our grief through song. Pastor Les will lead us here. You have in your um, bulletin, you've got the words for how great thou art. We'll sing it just as it is there, except for the last chorus. We'll only repeat the chorus once. We will remain, remain seated for this song. Die. 
I scarce can take it in that on the cross I burn in life. Thank you, Les. I'm now going to invite Rena up for a reading. Yes, that's you. <laughs> the scripture reading is John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Another reading is John 5, verse 24. I will tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes, in him, and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. My siblings and I have many memories of our Tante Lainey. Coming from a family of six children, our Tante Lainey came to our rescue more than we can ever mention. We spent many good times with her. They had two, they, the two of them had no children, but always had dogs and had us, all of us. As a small child, I would have sleepovers at her house. I actually had her undivided attention, and if for a moment she couldn't, a loving shepherd dog to cuddle and play with. Tante learned in a hurry that when you said something to me, I remembered. Tante told me stories of how she said she'd pick me up one night, which I obviously remembered, but she slightly forgot. And I had my little suitcase packed, and uh, my mom phoned her and said, Irene is crying, she has her suitcase packed, you've got to come and pick her up. And she did, so she jumped in her truck immediately from the workshop and came and picked me up. Tante had nicknames for all of us and lots of silly quotes which we all felt endeared by. As an adult, she called me Noodle, and I called her Tante Noodle. When I was young, it was Irenchen. My children loved to spend time with them as well. Not only did Mel and Dan love her moose and goose dinners and their hunting stories, we would celebrate their birthdays with them every year. The torches she had were memorable. Melanie also had sleepovers at Tante Laney's and she would teach, or rather make her, Barbie clothes for her, and she would bake with Melanie as well. She remembers playing in her garden full of flowers and ve fresh vegetables. She had a green thumb, no matter what she touched, it grew. Tante and uncle had several beehives as long as I can remember. When it came to harvest the honey, we'd get a call and we'd go over and we each got a chunk of wax filled with dripping sweet honey to chew on. Tante and uncle gave their time lovingly to all of us. Her own home always had an open door policy. If you're ever in the neighborhood, drop, just drop in, no invitation needed. And we did so quite often, and so did many others. Often when we visited at a random time, she would have a neighbor over or friends. When it was time to say goodbye, she'd always say, see you later, alligator, with a big smile. And we'd always say, in a while, crocodile. We love you, Tante. We'll never forget you. Next, I'm going to invite Fred up for the eulogy.
<laughs> Sorry. Magdalena was born August 28, 1930, in Schönborn, Petropolia, Yugoslavia, to Johann and Magdalena Schilling. She had two older brothers. Her mother died of pneumonia when Magdalena was just six weeks old. Her mother's sister and her husband, who were childless, took her and raised her as their own in Pancheva, Yugoslavia. She had a pleasant and fairly uneventful childhood, living on a farm with a bakery on one side of the property, a general store on the other, and a school that went to directly across the street. 34 Goethe-Straßen in die neue Welt, she would tell us. She said her parents were kind and never raised their voices at each other or her. She remembered the Alte Oma reading the Bible out loud in the evenings. Her birth father had remarried and lived a short distance away. She remembered a trip there by horse and buggy that took a number of days and was only taken there once before the war. In 1944, when Magdalena was 14, she, along with her parents, were put in a concentration camp. The parents did not survive, and Magdalena endured a lot of hardship, lack of food, hard labor, and more. In spite of everything, she was resilient and resourceful. She had to milk cows every day, but with guards constantly watching, she wasn't able to drink any of the milk. But when she had to deliver the milk by horse and buggy, she, she to the neighboring town early in the morning, she would tell us with a smug grin on her face, when I left, there was a thick layer of cream on the milk, but when I got there, it was not there. Where do you think it went? Hmm, she used to say. Because of that never-ending hard work, she and another young prisoner plotted about how to get a break by getting sick. They had heard that eating green fruit and drinking water would make them sick. Apparently, it did not work, and the hard labor continued. She also became very adept at sneaking some of the produce from the garden and learning to slightly mar some of the produce, as only the best was served to their captors and the blemished items were fed to the premise, uh, prisoners. I don't think she really forgot the sneakiness as I did hear some stories about her taking forbidden, forbidden items across borders much later. She was finally released in 1948 and worked at various jobs in Panchevo to support herself. In 1957, she moved to Germany as she had some relatives there. She arrived just as her Tante Maria Huber was getting ready to leave for Edmonton to be with our family. Maria Huber was our Oma. She begged her to try to arrange a way for her to come to Canada. In 1959, with the help of our Uncle Miller, that dream became reality. She lived with the Mullers, and not long after, at a family birthday party, a young man named Ginter Poling was invited. It was love at first sight, and they were married two months later. They stayed with the Mullers for a year and then moved into their house in the West End where she lived until 2019. Tante Lainey, as we always called her, and Uncle Ginter were a big part of our lives. We saw them on a very regular basis. They had a woodworking business and worked side by side. They supplied many businesses with cabinets and we and he would deliver them. Tante Lainey said she would get her driver's license and do the deliveries to give him more time at the shop. He let her know that he didn't think she could achieve that. She could not ignore a challenge like that. She practiced and got her license on the first try. As a young boy, I loved going there to play with wooden nails, wood, nails, and hammer, and with the dogs as well. At times, at times, when they visited, she would say, I'll pick you up one day to play. Well, to me, one day meant one day from now. So she would pester my mom. I would pester my mom until she called Tante Lainey and said, Du hast den Bub wieder versprochen, 
komm und hol denn endlich den kleinen Kusstag ab. Later, when I was a bit older, I would go there on my own by bike. I loved to watch TV there since we didn't have one. I often came late for our extremely punctual, non-negotiable 6 p.m. dinners, but Zorro was worth it. <laughs> she sometimes drove me and my sister to Kashuba's farm by Fawcett. She kept a horse there, and I loved being able to ride it. And one, on one trip, Tantilani was driving and got stuck in the mud because of the heavy rain that we encountered. I have no idea how we got out, but we did and made it safely. All I remember is that I felt secure and safe with Tante Laney, and I knew I could count on her. Tante Laney worked hard in the shop, but always found time to garden and plant flowers everywhere, inside and out. She had a very green thumb and was able to grow any flowers and get them to bloom. She also fed the birds and really enjoyed the blue jays that came every day if there was no peanuts, they would come right to the window and squawk until she fed them. Tantilani and Gin Uncle Ginter also spent time hunting, fishing, and camping. She quickly learned how to cook fish and wild game. We enjoyed many moose roasts and goose dinners at their home. They also enjoyed going out for dinners, dances, and performances at the Victoria Soccer Club. They had so many friends. I think they became friends with everybody that they met. They also built all of our original cabinets at Camp Evansburg. The sound booth in the church in the back, the penalty box by Tante Laney, was dubbed by the penalty box by Tante Laney, was also built by them. Ginter passed away in 2008 after a short illness. Tante Laney was 77 at that time they had both still been working in the shop until he became ill. She sold the shop that year and was feeling great loss with all the changes. But as always, there was all, also positive changes. Dorothy Hauf asked, <coughs> Dorothy Hauf asked her if she would be willing to go on a trip together. She went, and that was the beginning of a great friendship and many more trips together. If we asked her which her favorite was, she would say they were all great, but Africa was the best. Tante Lini loved to laugh and joke around. She used to phone us and in a very gruff voice say, hello, can I talk to Fred Huber, please? And I would answer, hi, Tante Lini, to which she would say, how did you know it was me? <laughs> I changed my voice. Call display always helped. All of the stories she told us were much more entertaining because of her voice changing skills. Sometimes when we went to visit her in a nursing home, I would start speaking in English and she would give me this stern look and ask if I couldn't speak German anymore. I then would attempt to speak my best German and she would look at me in aspiration and say, was ist mit dir los? Kannst du nicht mehr Schwabisch schwätzen? Tante Laney had many great qualities, but what I found really special about her was that she gave her your full undivided attention and made you feel as though you were the only one that mattered and you were, the, you were her favorite. I really treasured that as in our household with five sisters, that kind of attention wasn't easy to get. One face that was truly or totally descriptive of Tante Lady that she was proudly said to us many times and anyone else who would listen to her, she says, I'm a tough cookie. Yes, Tante Lady, you sure were. Tante Lady, you were a very special person in our lives and we will miss you. Thank you for always being, making us feel special. I was uh, asked to say a few words uh, 
about Magdalena, more warmly known as uh, Lainey. I often said to her that her and I were twins. Why? Because our birthdays were on the same day, August 28th, although hers came about 10 years before mine. <laughs> so we often sought each other out after the service to just chat and pretend that we were twins. We weren't identical twins, but uh, we, we felt we were in a way. She was always friendly and uh, easy to talk to, and although she has not been able to attend church here for several years, she was still on my mind, and I will miss chatting with her. So may she rest in peace. The family has also asked me to sing a solo this morning. Uh, I will be singing a familiar song written by Virgil and Blanche Brock. Uh, I've, some of you who were at some of the recent funerals realized that I sang it there as well, but I was asked by the family to sing it again this morning. So I trust that it will be a blessing to all of us as we anticipate going home to heaven to meet the loved ones that have gone before. Beyond the sunset, no blissful morning, when with our Savior heaven is begun, earth's toiling ended, a oh, glorious dawning, beyond the sunset, when Beyond the sunset, a hand will guide me to God the Father, whom I adore. His glorious presence, His words of welcome, will be my portion on that fair shore. Should you go first and I remain to walk the road alone, I'll live in memory's garden, dear, with happy days we've known. In spring, I'll watch for roses red when fades the lilac blue. In early fall, when brown leaves fall, I'll catch a glimpse of you. Should you go first and I remain for battles to be fought, each thing you've touched along the way will be a hallowed spot. I'll hear your voice, I'll see your smile. Though blindly I may grope, the memory of your helping hand will bear me on with hope. Should you go first and I remain to finish with a scroll, no lengthening shadow shall creep in to make this life seem droll. We've known so much of happiness, we've had our cup of joy, Memory is one gift of God that death cannot destroy. And finally, should you go first and I remain, one thing I'd have you do, walk slowly down that long, lone path, for soon I'll follow you. I want to know each step you take, that I may walk the same, for someday down that lonely road you'll hear me call your name. Beyond the sunset, oh glad reunion, with our dear loved ones who've gone before. In that fair
I'm going to invite Anita, Elaine, and Dorothy up for a tribute next. For those of you who do not know me, I am Anita Bon from Kelowna. I am the youngest of the siblings. Tante Laney is on our former father's side. Our tante and uncle never really had children of their own, so we were actually their adopted children. The six of us, you were children. I will be doing this tribute on behalf of Gerlinda Halbig, Gisla Schmidt, and myself. We all had nicknames, and mine was Spatz. She has always had a special place in my heart. When a loved one passes away, all we have is our memories, ones to laugh about and some to cry about, but all are to be treasured. I do have many of them, I'll only be sharing a few. In my younger years growing up, I loved going to tantas and uncles for sleepovers, like you've heard a lot of us have. It was a, such a special time, and I was always so spoiled there. They were always so full of hakatsen all the time. Going fishing with them was always a real highlight for me. I loved going on the boat and the drives in the bush with their Land Rover was quite amazing. Tante would always pack so much food and we had such great adventures together. Their woodworking shop was amazing. I received a Barbie doll house one year for Christmas and our sleepovers were such good memories. We would build new pieces of furniture all the time for this little house. It was so amazing. Cooking was also so much fun with my tante. Whether it was baking cookies or cooking dinner, venison, moose, or goose, she was always so particular in her kitchen with her cooking. As you know, they were hunters and fishers. Much did I know, but God had a plan. I also married a hunter and a fisherman. A good one, I my dad. I learned so much from my tante and could not in and in turn could use all those things in my life. What a blessing. I moved to Kelowna when I was 13 years old. For then, my visits were only when we could travel back to Edmonton to visit family. The times were so few, but nonetheless, they were so special and dear to me. She taught me how to do the best goose ever. It, was, it became one of my family's favorites. She used to order us geese from the Hutterites all the time and would ship them to Kelowna for us every year. Sometimes she would even deliver them and she would come along with them in her suitcase on the Greyhound. <laughs> her garden and her flowers were incredible. She took such pride in them and it gave her such joy to see them thrive in bloom indoors and outdoors. One time when she came in the summer, she gave Marv Uncle's favorite fishing rod. So we took her fishing on Woods Lake. Tante caught one of the biggest fish we have ever seen on that lake, and she had uh, so much fun. Her trips to us became less and less until she could no longer visit us. Living miles away from family, thank goodness for the phone. We had our weekly phone calls, and ours was Wednesdays and Sundays, to be in touch and catch up on all the good news. The phone calls, she would always go, Hello, Kelowna. What are you doing with the gumishu? is how she would answer and talk. If we missed a phone call for whatever reason, she would sure let us know that we missed a phone call. <laughs> they were very special and treasured and were terribly missed when she could no longer do them either. Now some thoughts from Gerlinda Helbig. She was called Gangele. Gerlinda's memories of Laney really started when Gerlinda and Jack got married. They would go visit, and she would always give them a tour of her garden and flowers, which she was so very proud of. She had amazing cactus plants and would always bloom in her garden, bloom, bloomed for her, sorry, and in the garden as well as in her home. She had the best tomatoes. She really had a green thumb. Gerland has memories of her baking, in particular her poppy seed cake and her Christmas cookies. Tante Laney loved her big dogs, but Gerlinda was always scared of them. But Tante Lindy was so happy that Jack, of course, loves the dogs. You all know that, and he had no problem playing with them all. 
After she moved into independent suite in Shepherd's Care, Jack and Gerlinda would bring her cake or fruit. Her first question was before eating anything, and did you make this? Is this fruit from your garden? Tantelani knew that Anita lived on an orchard, so she thought we all had fruit in our yards as well. When the weather was nice, Jack and Gerlinda would take her to the garden at Shepherd's Care for a walk. Then they would sit and have a snack and visit with her and anyone else who was out there. Tantelani spoke perfect English, but if we didn't speak German with her, she would get upset and say, Könnt ihr nicht mehr Deutsch sprechen? Meaning, you can't speak any German. And we all got that. When she moved into assistant living at Shepherd's Care, they had to get very creative with their visits. At, as time went on, Jack couldn't visit anymore due to his health, and she'd always ask about Jack. Where was he, and how is he doing? Gerlinda typed up the Lord's Prayer for Tante in German, and her response was, well, don't you think I know it? And Gerlinda told her, well, I know you knew it, but in English, but she needed help saying it in German. So then Lainey was okay with that. And sometimes when Gerlinda would pray with her, Gerlinda would stop partway through, and Tante would immediately pop in, and she would finish the prayer. Now some thoughts from Gysi. Oh, for Gisela Schmidt, but she was called Gysi. Tante Lainey loved her dogs. She always said, my dogs understand when I talk to them, and she always talked to them, and they were very obedient. Tante Lainey loved baking, and whenever Gisela and Reinald went to visit her, they were sure to be able to enjoy a good cup of coffee and a piece of her wonderful baking and cookies. Poppy seed was her favorite. At Christmas time, she would always bake lots of different kinds of cookies to give to her friends and family. When Tante was at Shepherd's Care, Reinhold would phone her most mornings to see how she was, and they would read the daily prayer in her, to her in German, which made her very happy. Tante Lainey had a lot of different funny sayings. In the evenings, when Gisela and Reinhold called her, she would say to them, Schlaft gut und träumt von sauer Gurken. Our Tante, Tante Lainey was a strong and a hardworking woman. Whatever she did, she did well. She loved and was dearly loved. She had a heart of gold. In her last years, Tante was so ready to go home. She always asked, why do I still have to be here? And we all repeatedly told her when God was ready, he would call her home, and so he did April 3rd. We love you, Tante. We'll miss you. Wiedersehen until we meet again. Hi, and for some of you that don't know me, I'm Elaine Malcolm. I'm a sister to all of these, and our nicknames that the other sisters have been talking about are true. Mine wasn't quite as cute as theirs. I was Edeltraut Kochtsauerkraut, which means my, my name in Germany is Edeltraut, and tend to always address me in that way when I called her. As soon as I said hello, it was, Hallo Edeltraut Kochtsauerkraut. Anyway, as today is a celebration and remembrance of Tante Leni's life, I wanted to share a few of the things that we have memories of Tante for. And there's, you've heard some rep repetitions of things and I tried to avoid some of that too. One of my earliest memories of Tante Leni and Uncle Ginter was at their wedding. I don't actually remember meeting Tante Lainey before that, but I'm sure we did while they were engaged. But it was a very, very special occasion for us because as you've heard, a family of six kids is not invited very often to dinner at anybody's house, much less to a wedding. And we had such a good time. It was so exciting to be invited. They were very well suited as you've heard they worked together, they 
played together, they hunted and fished together. As you saw in the picture, it was kind of gross. They were actually skinning a moose or something like that together. Anyway, they did all of that, and Saturday night was party night at Victoria Soccer Club. And I know some of their friends from Victoria Soccer Club are here today. It's really nice. They really enjoyed those times. Tanta's specialty, as you heard, was crispy goose and moose and all kinds of wild meat with all the trimmings, which was a real treat. Tanta was not overwhelmed with all of us, six kids, as she had no children of her own, and we were her kids, she said many times. We shared many meals at her house and she would set up different tables because of course no table is big enough for eight plus two, so 10 at that time in their little house. Tante always had coffee and cake for any guests that might stop by and rarely was she out of poppy seed cake as it was one of her favorites. She was always happy to see us and always very hospitable. Tante Laney, as Fred said before, often referred to herself as a tough cookie and proved that true time and time again. My brother Fred and I spent some weeks in the summer at the Kashubas farm. It was a big thrill for us and Fred mentioned part of that one trip that we went that Tante Laney and Uncle Ginter took us on. They took us there in absolutely pouring rain and in those days, they didn't have nice gravel or paved roads. We had, there was mud, and the mud, we were sliding all over the road. I had silent tears rolling down my cheeks. All of a sudden, Fred didn't mention this, maybe he forgot, a big rock came and hit us in the window of their, and, and, all of the glass fell all over us in the front seat. We were on a bench seat in their favorite Volkswagen truck. Many of you are familiar with one of Tante Laney's favorite phrases. Well, what you gonna do? Well, our tough cookie, she brushed the glass off our laps, out of our hair, got us cleaned up as best she could on that muddy, muddy road, told me that I didn't need to cry that it would be all right. We continued on and we did finally make it to the farm. In 1980, Vaughn and I and our two little boys moved to Cochrane for Vaughn's job. Our visits were fewer. When we came to Edmonton, we always made a point of seeing them. And at least once a year, we would see them at the annual Boxing Day party. When our parents were in their last days, Tante Laney joined our siblings and kids around their best bedside. That's what families do. They support one another. Uncle Ginter's death was devastating to her, and now we were there to support her. We enjoyed several visits with her when she came to stay at our house. Some of our favorite memories of our visits to the famous Cochrane McKay's ice cream shop on Main Street, where she would always enjoy at least two scoops. We will never eat Rocky Road ice cream again without thinking of her as that it was her favorite. When Tante told us that she wasn't, that she hadn't visited Banff in 35 years, we decided it would be fun to pack a lunch, take her to Banff for a picnic on the river. We took her down Main Street afterwards to browse some of the shops and just show her some of, of Banff, which hadn't changed all that much in 35 years. As we were going out of one of the shops, she noticed that her favorite blue flowered cap was gone. So it was kind of warm and she probably took it off and, and put it somewhere, but anyway, we had to retrace our steps, go to every single shop that we visited, every place we went to, searching for her cap without success. Because it was her favorite, the next day I called each shop to see if it had been turned in or if they had found it whilst they were cleaning up. She was convinced somebody actually took her cap, like stole her cap because it was so beautiful. It was a value village special one of her faves. 
At her next visit, we made up for it by taking her to High River, where her favorite show, Heartland, is filmed. There, she bought a new Heartland cap, one for her and one for our brother-in-law, Reinhold. She said it was also his favorite show, and so she wanted to get him one as well. It was so good to see her happy and having such a good time. A couple of springs, she had, had come, um, had us searching many greenhouses, which you've heard with her green thumb. She loved plants. I love plants, flowers. And so we spent lots of time going from one greenhouse to another searching for rare plants that were more difficult to find. And then we would come home and transplant them, and she enjoyed that so much. One day she decided she was going to help Vaughn as he was fixing the back fence. And that was really fun for her. She swung the hammer and liked the nails, and, and she, she enjoyed men's heavier work. She'd rather do that than do girls' work. So she often said that we sisters were too soft, too weak, and we didn't know how to work. She was a tough cookie. For those of you that don't know, I worked in a dental office for 20 years. Teeth and hygiene are important to me. Tante refused regular oral care as she said the film, which we call plaque, protected her teeth from cavities, and that is why her teeth were so good. Sometimes she would take a large mouthful of Schlivovitz, which is a potent Yugoslavian alcohol, swish it around her mouth, clean her teeth, and then, of course, you can't waste it, so she would swallow it. Tante had her own ideas that you couldn't talk her out of. What a character. But you know, she may have had something there. She died in her 90s without having dentures. Dentists, beware. The last thing I'd like to share are the times that Tante was upset and she could no longer live on her own and didn't understand that she suffered memory loss and was no longer safe on her own. We did not know how to help in those times and would tell her that if we could fix it, we would. We would ask if we could pray for her and almost always she said yes. We weren't always sure where Tante's spiritual life was at. When one time I asked her if she would like to invite Jesus into her heart to be with her and help her, she said, yes. I was so blessed to pray what we call the sinner's prayer with her as she repeated, repeated each phrase after me. I wish I could say that life got easier for her. She continued to have many tough days ahead. However, the Bible promises that God is faithful to hear our prayers and knows our hearts. I trust that God heard Tante Laney's prayer, that as she asked for forgiveness and received his gift of eternal life, we will see her again. God bless you, Tante Laney. Until we meet again, we will miss you. And in Tante Laney's words, see you later, alligator. As mentioned before, Lenny was my friend and a wonderful travel uh, partner and companion. And we did a number of trips together a few years ago. And even now, when I think about her, um, when I escape uh, winter for a, a little while and to um, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, I think about her because um, that was a stopover we did a few years ago on our um, Panama Canal cruise. So um, it's a great memory always of uh, Lenny at that time as well. Lenny was easygoing and adventurous and went along with whatever I suggested. We didn't know each other that well at first and I planned the trips according to my interests, history, archeology, span um, architecture, love of nature and music, 
And the last item on my bucket list, snorkeling at the Great Barrier Reef. Some trips and excursions were quite costly, and even travel insurance was high for her. But this did not deter Leni. She enjoyed and joined even a balloon ride over the Serengeti uh, Masamara in Kenya, leaving our hotel at four o'clock in the morning. None of that mattered to her. Um, and we saw uh, pictures um, earlier here on the screen already where she is climbing up on a huge elephant uh, for a ride. She was holding baby alligators, walked up to a live uh, lion to take her picture. So um, nothing seized her. She was just in for all the excitement available. Um, and she was very fit, and it was also mentioned already that she was a tough cookie, and I experienced that too as we were traveling together. She was 11 years my senior, but she never had any trouble keeping up with me. Looking back over my notes, I'm surprised that she ever agreed to travel with me again after our initial Africa excursion. We traveled through eight countries, South Africa, Namibia, Zimbabwe, Swaziland, Botswana, Mozambique, Kenya, and Tanzania. We had primitive accommodation at times with shared bathroom facilities, as well as luxurious uh, hotels with gorgeous swimming pools. <clears throat> but what really amazes me looking back is that times we were in transit for 44 hours nonstop. That's a long time for us old ladies. Another example of Lenny's stamina is when she was uh, stung by a scorpion and uh, getting some medicine from the hotel staff just continued with the planned safari. And one time in Wellington, New Zealand, she chose to walk 40 minutes rather than taking the bus back to the ship. Nice weather outside, why should we sit in the crowded bus? We also endured humid and scorching temperatures of up to 35 degrees in Holland, Mexico, and Australia, and cold, blustering wind and rain of about nine degrees in Quebec and Belize. But she took it all in stride. Lainey was also alert and resourceful. On one occasion, while we were waiting for the bus in the hotel lobby in Los Angeles to get a ride to our ship for the Panama Canal cruise, she reminded me that I forgot to take out the money and passports from the safe. What a disaster that would have been. Another incident that shows her keen mind was in Quebec City. When I was searching for a phone number to order a taxi to drive us to the harbor, Lainey just went outside and flagged a cab down. One common thing we shared was our faith. We always had our devotions and prayed together and attended church whenever we had a chance. She was very disappointed that our timing didn't allow us to go to the German service at the Lutheran Church in Windhoek, Namibia. We also shared a love for nature, music, and food, and we were able to enjoy all of it in abundance on our trips. We marveled at God's uh, creation, first in 2013 in Africa. The magnificent animal world and close encounters with so many wild animals, just everything on earth really that's out there, elephants, cheetahs, lions, zebras, giraffes, wildebeest, hyenas, impalas, monkeys, and wild dogs, crocodiles, and hippos, we saw it all and almost as close that we could touch it. Some elephants walked across the road right in front of us and also next to our balcony, and baby monkeys try, uh, tried climbing, they were climbing up on the railing, trying to get into our room. We also watched a zebra being killed by two lions, one having a grip on its throat and the other holding on to the rear. It took a long time till their prey finally stopped struggling. And then the lions were so tired, they didn't even uh, feast on their kill, but they had to lay down for a rest first. 
In 2015, on our New Zealand and Australia cruise, we saw wombats, two Tasmanian devils. We were able to hold koala bears and feed uh, kangaroos. Also highlights were the unique landscapes of deserts like the Kalahari and Serengeti, the huge sand tude dunes in Namibia, mountaintops like Table Mountain in Cape Town, gushing waters at Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe, the Rhine cruise in Germany with the Lorelei rock and uh, castles and vineyards, and the unique rock formation at Peggy's Cove in Nova Scotia. We also enjoyed the magnificent fall foliage in New England to our last uh, cruise in 2017, the gorgeous flowers and fauna of Kirsten Bosch Botanical Gardens in Cape Town, as well as Butchard Gardens in Victoria, BC in 2016. And we also shared a love of music, attending live concerts in Vienna and performances of string quartets, pianists, guitarists, saxophone, and fiddle players while on the cruise ships. I think we both loved the Africa trip the most. Lenny had wanted to do this uh, to hunt animals, but our trip was a great alternative because we gathered lasting memories with our camera. The other favorite trip for Lenny was the river cruise from Amsterdam to Budapest in 2015, floating on the Rhine, Main, and Danube rivers and exploring many cities along the way. Slovakia and Hungary are close to where Leni grew up, and she always thrilled to find people to converse in her native language. Even uh, on the cru cruise ship, she would find sales uh, staff that could speak, and she always would uh, search them out and have a good chat with them. Another highlight for her was spending a few hours with her nephew Thomas Poling, his wife and daughter in Nuremberg. We sat together for lunch in one of the main squares close to the Frauenkirche. Unfortunately, we both had to go our uh, own way again, but I think Leni remembered this visit very fondly for a long time. Leni had uncunning luck losing her luggage. While being transported by bus from the hotel to the Norwegian Sun for the Panama Canal cruise, her bags did not arrive. Luckily, it took less than an hour waiting for other buses to unload suitcases that she was able to spot hers. It was much worse, though, on our trip to New Zealand and Australia. She was only unable to retrieve her suitcase after we had been on board of the ship already for three days. So meanwhile, we had it contained, uh, contacted the uh, insurance company, and she had purchased some clothes and toiletries, even had to get a prescription filled, with much um, appreciated help from Rosalie Carr, uh, Rosemary Carr. Her name was Shech. She was um, a great friend and a former member of our church here. And she had invited us for supper and also gave us a tour of the area. One more incident uh, of losing luggage was on our New England cruise as well. At that time, Lainey finally got her luggage after we left uh, uh, on the ship from Quebec uh, Harbor, so it wasn't quite that long, but it always happened to her. I always had mine every time, never a problem. Anyway, I will forever be grateful for these wonderful memories and my friendship with Lainey and I'm looking forward to our reunion after my last journey when Christ calls me home. And I left a little binder out front with a, a bit more information on our trips if you have time and want to look at it. At this time, we're gonna continue working out our grief with a song from Les. I think. Holy yeah, Holy City, right on. Sorry, not from Les, from Fred and
so much. Fred and Evelyn, appreciate that. And that's such a suitable song. When uh, we go to the grave site and we, we lay Magdalena down to rest, I'm going to bless the grave saying, Bless, we pray, this grave set apart for the rest of your servant Magdalena, that she whose body is buried here may rest from her labors in peace and quietness until the resurrection on the last day when the new Jerusalem comes down, the dead are raised, and the righteous are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, I, I imagine uh, that's going to be a great day for Magdalena and that she's going to find profound rest in Jesus. When I sat with Magdalena's family, I was immediately impressed by her rigorous work ethic. Among her other virtues, like her loyalty and faithfulness in marriage, her caring heart for her dogs, and her straightforward and simple way of speaking. Magdalena was a hard worker. What's more, she loved her work. Her and her husband, Gunther, were renowned for their woodworking prowess and the attention that they gave to their vocation. When I asked her family, why did she work so hard? The answer was simply, it was her way of life. Magdalena would work late into the night alongside her husband, a beautiful expression of their shared love. Where many couples are divided by the demands of work, they worked side by side. I can imagine that since Magdalena loved her work so much, she probably passed away with a to-do list on her bedside table. She probably had things that she anticipated doing and never had a chance to do. I imagine that as she sat at the end of a long, productive life, she felt like many of us do at the end of a long, productive day. Accomplished, but still thinking of the work left undone. We will always leave work unfinished. Presidents will leave administration to the next person, and janitors will arrive at work to find new messes to clean. Pastors will leave disciples untaught, and Magdalena will have left some cabinets unfinished. The author of the biblical book, Ecclesiastes, writes, So I saw there is nothing better for a person than to enjoy their work, because that is their lot. For who can bring them to see what will happen after them? Magdalena would have faced this truth. Her working would end even before the work itself was finished. And yet, we live in a, a, an age of Leistung. That's, that's my, my effort at putting a German word in today. I, I understand that word to mean productivity. We're expected to be productive all the time, even in our leisure time, in an age where we feel deeply the absence of God, where the cogs of society turn as if God had stopped turning them, we all know this common zeitgeist that demands more from us. More work, more productivity. We are wrung dry like rags and left feeling guilty for the time we do take for ourselves. And even still, still, we leave work unfinished. No amount of Leistung will satisfy the grave. No amount of labor will fill death's stomach. And this can be a wildly disempowering thought. Why work at all if work will never end? If you know Magdalena, you know that she was also a Christian. Perhaps not a quiet church mouse kind of Christian, but more of an earthy, robust kind of Christian that cares more about doing right by her neighbors than saying the right thing the right way. She was one tough cookie, as I've heard it said multiple times today. And she had to be a tough cookie to make it through everything that she did. She thrived, not only decades of hard, hard work, but even through imprisonment 
in a Russian concentration camp where her parents died. Magdalena endured what I can only imagine would have destroyed me. Ecclesiastes is not silent on this either, with the teacher writing, again, I looked and saw all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. I saw the tears of the oppressed, and they had no comforter. Power was on the side of their oppressors, and they had no comforter. And again, I'm confronted by this question. Why persevere when there seems to be no justice for this undoing? Why did Magdalena continue in spite of such torture? I can't say for sure what spark glowed in Magdalena's heart that carried her through these times. I want to believe that it is her faith in God, that a God of justice and compassion would one day bring her to that very same justice and rest. And I think that God did show up for Magdalena. What could have been a great evil in Magdalena's life was fashioned for good. Her trauma was worked out on the faces of wooden cabinets. Her offerings were multiplied in her relationships with family, friends, and customers. We learn in Romans from the Apostle Paul that we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. God had drawn near to Magdalena through her Savior, Jesus Christ, and dwelled with her in her marriage, in her work, and even in the midst of pain. God found Magdalena and worked with her sanding down burrs and knots, embracing her as she was. He met her in the details of cabinets and through conversations girded by the buzz of a miter saw. God carved a space in his creation specifically for Magdalena, who worked out her pain in her work. I don't know for sure how deeply her time in this concentration camp affected Magdalena. I don't know if she had work left undone in recovering from that awful time. But what I do know is that God in his infinite mercy carved out time and rest in the most unlikely place in her work for her to be relieved of this pain, to work it out. And the God who began this work of bringing Magdalena to peace and rest has now undoubtedly finished this work, finally having drawn her soul to himself. I'm sure Magdalena will have a little cabinet shop in the resurrection where she enjoys continuing this craft. And this is my prayer for her and my hope for myself that God has met us in the midst of our broken and shattered places to give us rest as well. That God will accomplish that rest fully and finally in his resurrection, even as we persevere, persevere up to and through death. May God grant his rest and peace to Magdalena. May he grant us his rest and peace now, also as a sign of that eternal and full rest that he holds for all of us in the resurrection. Amen. Now we're going to continue our grief in song by inviting Les up. I'm sure Magdalena's, Laney's prayer would be, it is well with my soul. Thank you, Elaine, for sharing about her coming to know the Lord. That's wonderful. I think we should all stand and sing this last song, It is well with my soul, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll.
standing for prayer. I want to thank you all once again for all coming out and singing and remembering and most of all for sharing the burden of grief with Magdalena's family. My prayer for you today is that you would know that you are not alone in your grief and that God and the people he has given you would draw close, especially in the season of tears. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for Magdalena. Thank you for the witness of her life to your goodness and your glory. Thank you for her resilience and perseverance in the face of so much. Thank you that she did not just persevere through, through trials with a stoic face, but one of warmth one that welcomed in, one that became a shelter for others. I pray, Father, that we would see this, that we would be transformed by it, that we would know that there is goodness and mercy and comfort in this world, and that we would turn to you and look to you for this now. pray this in your name, Father. Amen. The funeral directors are going to come and take out Magdalena's body, and we're going to allow the family to leave first. Uh, Once everyone has evacuated, you are welcome to go downstairs uh, to the fellowship hall for refreshments and coffee. Thank you.